Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of John McAfee? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll go through the background of John McAfee. I'll move to the timeline of the alleged crimes, then offer my analysis. Starting with the background, John McAfee was born on a U.S. Army base in the United Kingdom on September 18, 1945. His father was an American soldier. He was stationed at the base. He struggled with his intake of alcohol. His mother was British. She had worked as a bank teller. John was an only child. The family moved to Salem, Virginia when John was two years old. John's father would die when John was 15 from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. John attended Roanoke College in Virginia, graduating with a bachelor's degree in mathematics in 1967. After graduation, he attended Northeast Louisiana State College. He was trying to earn a doctorate in mathematics, but the college expelled him sometime around 1968 for entering into a romantic relationship with an undergraduate. John would marry her sometime around that same time. They would divorce sometime later. John's career centered around technology, including software development. He had a number of jobs. He worked for NASA on the Apollo program. He was an operating system architect for Xerox. He worked at several companies as a software developer. When he was working for Lockheed in the 1980s, he was able to work with the first computer virus for the PC. This virus was called Brain. He took an interest in designing software to defeat computer viruses. In 1987, he founded McAfee Associates Incorporated. This would be the first company to sell antivirus software to the public. That same year, he would marry a former flight attendant. That marriage lasted for five years. In 1993, John stepped down as chief executive. In 1994, he sold his stake in the company and had no more involvement in its operations. John became critical of the company he had founded, calling McAfee antivirus bloatware, and the worst software on the planet. John continued working after his time at that company. He was involved in a number of other business ventures. By 2009, his wealth had decreased from $100 million down to $4 million. He had made a number of extremely poor investments. He claimed the recession explained why he lost so much money. In February 2010, John started a company in Belize. Ostensibly, his goal was to manufacture antibiotics. So not antivirus for computers, but antibiotics for human beings. He was arrested in Belize in April of 2012. Allegedly, he had been manufacturing drugs and possessed an unlicensed weapon. He was never charged. In November of 2012, he was named a person of interest in connection with the murder of his neighbor, an American expatriate living in Belize who had been shot dead in his home. Here's the theory about what happened in that case. John allowed his guard dogs to roam free on the beach near his home, which was probably better for their health than assigning them to monitor security cameras, but it's not safe for people on the beach. The dogs were aggressive. His neighbor complained, and sometime later, four of John's guard dogs were found dead. They had been poisoned. It is believed that John killed his neighbor out of revenge. John was never taken into custody because he fled Belize. Unlike, as is sometimes the case with his eponymous antivirus software, the uninstalled procedure to remove John from the country was successful. However, when he tried to reinstall himself into Guatemala, he was arrested for illegally entering the country. He faked a number of heart attacks in order to give his attorney time to fight the deportation to Belize. Guatemala ended up deporting John to the United States. He lost a civil suit in connection with the death of his neighbor, but he never faced criminal justice in that case. The night after he arrived in the United States, he was solicited by a woman offering sex in exchange for money. She was 30 years his junior. They would marry in 2013. In August of 2015, John was arrested in Tennessee for DUI and possession of a firearm while intoxicated. Also in 2015, we see that John announced his run for President of the United States. He formed a new political party called the Cyber Party, although ultimately 
he unsuccessfully sought the nomination of the Libertarian Party. In May of 2016, John became the CEO of MGT Capital Investments, which was a technology holding company. He worked to develop cybersecurity solutions. John left MGT in January of 2018, and in August of 2018, started working as the CEO of a cryptocurrency company. In 2018, he announced that he would run for president again in 2020. In January of 2019, John, his wife, and four people who worked on his campaign were indicted for tax evasion. It appears as though John failed to file tax returns from 2014 to 2018. During the same time, he earned millions of dollars. Evidently, he believed that it was illegal for the government to collect taxes. The government disagreed. He was arrested in July of 2019 in the Dominican Republic. They suspected him of carrying high-caliber weapons and ammunition. The weapons were seized, but he was released. So I guess they really liked his weapons. He suspended his campaign in March of 2020, but then changed his mind the next day. Ultimately, he failed to get the nomination. In October of 2020, John was arrested in Spain because of the whole tax evasion situation. In March of 2021, he was indicted on new charges. He had allegedly orchestrated a scheme to defraud cryptocurrency investors out of millions of dollars. On June 23, 2021, the Spanish National Court ordered that John be extradited to the United States. He had fought this for some time. A few hours later, John was found dead in his prison cell. He had brought an end to his life by hanging. John McAfee was 75 years old. Now moving to my analysis. I'm not aware of any official mental health diagnosis for John McAfee. John suggested that he had a substance use problem. He consumed excessive quantities of alcohol and cocaine. He claimed that Alcoholics Anonymous saved his life. John also used a drug called MDPV, otherwise known as bath salts, and a drug that's even more unusual called Alpha PHP. This drug has a few interesting effects, including hallucinations, cognitive impairment, paranoia, unconsciousness, seizures, cardiac arrest, anxiety, vomiting, and death. The last effect only occurs a maximum of one time for each person who takes the drug. It's self-limiting. It is believed that his use of alpha PHP caused a dramatic personality shift sometime around 2010. John McAfee described himself as a madman, a lover of women, and an eccentric millionaire. He was regarded as a technology genius and someone who understood how to manipulate the media. John McAfee had an interesting combination of traits. He was highly intelligent, assertive, and could be quite conscientious at times, like he had to work diligently to design software. But at the same time, he was attention-seeking, reckless, impulsive, sensation-seeking, and had difficulty resisting temptation. John was hedonistic, always looking for more pleasure. Even though he was never convicted for the major crimes he was accused of, I think it is reasonable to believe he was guilty. The evidence suggests that he defrauded investors, defrauded the government, and may have murdered his neighbor in Belize. John claimed that he had accumulated 21 arrests in 11 different countries. So criminality wasn't something he was ashamed of. Rather, he was quite proud to be rebellious. There are many other allegations that have been made against John as well, including sex offenses, bribery, and, of course, drug manufacturing. John McAfee illustrates the dangers of what happens when someone who manifests antisocial behavior becomes wealthy, so they gain greater capabilities to do whatever they want. He often used his attorneys to escape the consequences of his actions. He also faked symptoms to escape justice, like when he claimed to have heart attacks in Belize and later admitted that he lied. Even though it would appear as though John McAfee was essentially a con artist and maybe a killer, he became a hero to many in the world of technology. He was able to convince people to be afraid of certain types of technology, and he would work on the solutions to the problems he was highlighting. So he was promoting his industry through fear. The various publicity stunts and unusual behaviors he manifested were interpreted by some as indicative of brilliance. Just to name a few of his more unusual actions that were discussed in the media, he claimed he could decrypt the iPhone used by the perpetrators of the 2015 attack 
in San Bernardino. Later, he admitted that it was a publicity stunt, although he maintained he could still really do it. He claimed he had 47 genetic children. He released a YouTube video featuring him trying to show people how to uninstall McAfee antivirus. He was surrounded by women. At one point, he was snorting bath salts. He had guns on the table in front of him. In the end, he produces a pistol, and cheap special effects makes it seem as though he shot his laptop. I think he meant the video to be humorous, but a more accurate description would be disturbing, odd, poorly executed, bizarre, and creepy. I think John McAfee enjoyed being portrayed as a technology rebel, someone who is dangerous but also necessary for safety. There was a duality to John McAfee. I think he enjoyed the support of conspiracy theorists. According to his wife, he once said that if he was ever found dead by hanging, it would mean he was murdered. There were other times as well where he suggested he was the target of various governments. The question here becomes, was this an act? Was this something he did to manipulate and get people on his side? Or was he truly fearful? It was reported that when he was in Belize, he assembled his own private army. Security was a priority. I think it is reasonable to believe that he was actually paranoid, perhaps because of using alpha PHP, although part of it may have been because he was allegedly trying to start his own drug manufacturing business. Moving to my final thoughts in this case, John McAfee was an interesting guy who led a life filled with a lot of crime, sex, drugs, and excitement. I find it ironic that he will be remembered as someone dangerous who designed products to create security. Those are my thoughts in the case of John McAfee. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.